Hi, my name is uh, Kesar Hussain. Uh, I'm a Director of Digital Transformation globally um, at Petrofac. And today I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on digital transformation from my perspective and, and not representing any particular company. Digital transformation is an interesting pairing of words. Um, when I think of transformation, it's an easy one. It reminds me of that old Greek philosophy that change is the only constant in life. And I think I see transformation the same way that for every organization, for every individual, uh, we're in a constant state of change. And in a company, that means you're constantly trying to evolve and get better. It's not something that you do as a periodic activity. Um, now, digital it, it's a tough one because you hear different terms and words out there. You know, you might hear digitalization, digital digitization, or you might hear people referencing technologies like Data Lake or RPA. And I think I, I always like to simplify things. And for me, digital, what it means is that a company or a company understands what are all my different experiences in, in terms of service offerings that I have, whether it's internal or external. And then secondly, when I look at that journey path, I should be able to measure it all the way through. It should go on my digital thread. There shouldn't be something where it's a little silo that somebody's working on outside of that sort of digital thread. So if you think, you think in those terms and you imagine that every single experience has that digital thread, it allows us to constantly measure and constantly improve that which we do. And therefore, we get that outcome of transformation. I think of digital technologies, uh, your base is your cloud and um, your cybersecurity. Um, everything's moving towards the cloud, platform as a service, et cetera. Uh, cybersecurity is becoming more phenomenal in terms of the protection it offers us. If you think of network segmentation as one example, then you've got an automation layer. So you've got robotic process automation, machine learning, and AI. They all go hand in hand and, and they're amazing, amazing tools there. Um, we've also then, we're also seeing um, a move towards what they call LCAPs, low code application platforms. Digital is all about platforms. We're not, you know, we're moving away from creating these um, one off uh, technologies or solutions on, say, .NET here, Java here, where you have these recurring license costs. And then every time I want to change something, I have to go to the vendor as well. It becomes very problematic and costly. Um, with uh, the other technology layer, would be 5G. 5G massively increases the amount of data we can capture. So the, the ad advent of IoT sensors, historically, which were expensive, as they become more and more uh, cheaper to produce, they're going to play a bigger role in, in that which we do. And last but not least, your data lake. You want all your data to go into the data lake so that you can do constant um, analysis of what I talked about earlier, which is your digital thread. Now, if we talk about the different sort of facets of uh, oil and gas uh, in terms of the different sort of streams, I mean, I can name a few examples. So if we th start with the EPC side of things, so if you think of engineering uh, in the engineering in the engineering domain um, historically what's happened is you've outsourced your engineering teams to a cheaper country um, and so when the feed studies come in you can take these uh, PNID documents and then you know you have a team manually extracting data which you then need to develop your proposals so if you take machine learning with AI and computer vision what you can teach your system to do is to automate and read that data out and form that table for you. So you're taking an activity which was 25 hours before down to maybe minutes. That's the ideal. So now not only have you reduced your costs, but you've increased the speed at which you are doing that piece of work. Therefore, that makes you a lot more competitive compared to your competition. So that's a big one over there. If I think of supply chains, historically a large EPC, you've got multiple projects going on. You know, you're buying similar materials across all of these. So the concept of of having a platform, which I mentioned, uh, with a supply control layer tower, con supply control tower on above it, allows you to start being more clever with when you order things and what you order and everything goes around it. So think about it this way. Oh, I need to order this particular material. Which of the project do I need it for? So I need it for four other ones. If I buy it at this time, it means I get the economies of scale in terms of buying the material and therefore I get a greater profit margin out of it. 
Linked to that also is that if I can track everything from the point it's getting fabricated to reaching my particular site, I can then optimize when my subcontractor comes onto site to build a particular part. So you, you're getting cost savings there as well. And so we're, we're seeing globally that margins are being cut. So you're going to see organizations becoming more clever and using digital technology to try and reduce that cost base. Um, if I think of the construction side of things, um, you use um, stuff like IoT sensors to track what's my utilization rate of my uh, cranes, my diggers, whatever I've got on site. So now if you think of the supply control tower uh, concept on a platform, it allows you to look across a, a region and see, well, actually, I'm not really utilizing this crane as much. So I can cut my costs there and I can move money around or move assets around for that matter. Same with workforce uh, optimization in terms of safety and all these other things. Um, outside of EPC, if I think of um, the EPS sort of service, service line of business, if you're thinking of an offshore facility, um, then you know having the ability to not fly people out onto a particular rig using digital technologies has a cost saving in terms of flying out there, but also in terms of better using that person. So if I had a very highly specialized person and I flew him out to a rig, um, and instead of having to do that, I kept him kept him somewhere central so he can be the overriding sort of voice of reason and guidance. Um, it allows you to better utilize that person, need less people, and reduce costs over. Role. So there's some of the examples and, and there's lots out there. So I, I mean, I read somewhere that 70% of digital transformations fail. Um, I think that was McKinsey or Gartner. And when I think about this, I think organizations sometimes get into a panic mode. You know, everything's going digital, everything's going cloud. We therefore have to do something. And it'll be, you know, here's CDO, here's CIO, here's X million. Um, go and digitally transform, transform our business. And then there's this urgency to find projects and just be seen to be delivering something. And uh, when I look at it, I think digital transformation needs a very sort of strategic view on it. So your first step should always be about fix your basics. So that means, um, you know, moving away from these isolated uh, technologies to move into a cloud stack um, in terms of your infrastructure, which is going to support your digital journey. I think that's really important. And with it, you need a very strong um, security uh, methodology that goes with it. So that's your fix your basics. And then the other part of fix your basics would be move towards a platform. So move away from these isolated technologies towards platform for everything that you do, do to, you do today, if I can say the word. Secondly, from that, it's about understanding what problem am I now trying to solve? What is it that it is that I'm trying to do? And it all boils back to your digital thread and understanding each experience and journey of your customers as an organization, both internal and external. Map all of them out and then start looking at what technology to ap uh, apply. And then when you're looking at the technology stack, um, you need to then look at that stack from two perspectives. One is there's that technology where there's no debate on it. You just got to do it because it's, it is a proven thing to do and it's going to drastically improve you as an organization. I would say cloud probably comes under, the, under that, um, you know, with it, all its different capabilities. Then you've got like stuff that you're not sure about what value it'll add to your organization. So that's where you can do a minimal viable product or a proof of concept to test it out on a, on a small scale. So it's got a designated budget, you deliver it in an agile project fashion and you constantly monitor it. And you have these milestones where you can review it and say, actually it's very clear this technology is not gonna give us any value Let's stop it. And then you take it back through your steer core and you, and you talk it through. And, and that's, that's a good way of doing it because it allows you to fail um, and it allows you to um, also be economic with the budget that you have. Um, and then I would say another layer on top of that would be, which is your fourth layer, I'd say is um, you got to understand yourself as an organization. We're not a technology organization, so there's technology partners out there who can help accelerate your journey. So instead of trying to recruit all these different people internally, sometimes it's better where you're doing pioneering stuff to outsource it with technology partners. 
And then I would say your last layer is that it comes, and, I, and I'm sure the CFOs and the finance people will love this, is just because you get a digital budget, it's, your target isn't to spend all the budget. The target is that there's a tangible benefit at the end of it, which makes you as a business better than what it was prior to this implementation. So you need to have a track on all your spend and a very um, tangible manner in which you track your benefits. So every dollar that we spend at the end of it, when the project's gone live and we're depreciating it from an accounting perspective, we should be also tracking what are the benefits that we're deriving. So if you have that loop together, it'll ensure that you don't spend willy-nilly without thinking very strategically on how we should spend that money. Um, if there's any questions that you um, have from what I presented today, I'm happy for you to reach out to me. I'm happy to have a discussion. Thank you very much.